Hey everybody, uh, I thought I'd make a video on um, fixing this uh, power supply. So uh, what happened recently at my house is the power supply for my video cameras died. Uh, and that's what I'm holding here in my hand. So there's a different way to do these power supplies. This one is a rack mount one because all of my equipment is on, a, is on an equipment rack. And it looks really good and, uh, and so forth. So what this thing is, this is what the front of it looks like. You can see it's got brackets, it mounts on a rack. It's got uh, 16 LEDs, it's a 16 channel power supply. On the back you can see it's got a uh, bunch of terminal blocks for wiring up. It's just a 12 volt output, uh, an on off switch, and then a power plug. Um, this thing uh, you know, was, uh, was made by Activision. Um, I bought it, uh, wow, I bought it when we built the house, maybe uh, 2011. So uh, it's about seven years old, seven, eight years old. And uh, anyway, just completely died. All of them went dead. Um, so a new one of these I looked up, I think is in the low 100s, uh, which is about what I paid for it. I think I may have paid 100, 120 for it. Uh, a replacement unit um, right now looks like it's uh, about 150. Um, so before we do that, we're going to try to fix this thing. Uh, because when you got something that costs $150 to replace and it's something as simple as the power supply, you ought to give it a shot, right? So let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do with this thing before we even take it apart is we're just going to double check it and make sure it doesn't work. So, um, this got one of these kind of power cords. So, oops, one of these kind of power cords. So I'm just going to plug this in. So um, you always want to check your power cord too to make sure that's working. And it is, as you can see there. Uh, we've got our 120 volts that we're supposed to have. So we'll just check some of these uh, channels here to make sure that uh, Maybe the LEDs aren't working, but the channels are actually working. All right, we got no voltage at all. Uh, power is on. We checked the voltage here, so the thing's definitely messed up. Okay, so uh, I looked at this thing and it looks like uh, just a couple of screws and this top piece right here will come off. So we'll take these out. Okay, so uh, let me show you what's going on on the inside of this thing. Uh, you can see our incoming power is right there. Our electric switch is there. This is where power goes into the actual power supply unit, which is right here. Um, right over here, um, you can see the this is the terminal block on the outside where everything hooks up. And you can see this roll of, row of PTCs here. This particular power supply has the benefit that it has uh, individual circuit protection. So PTCs are a pretty neat electronic device that can uh, detect if there's a short circuit and they will just um, reduce the current and open that circuit and uh, safely protect it. And then when the uh, short is removed, it'll just return to normal operation. So that's what's going on right here. Uh, and then we've got this ribbon cable going over to this panel that has LEDs on it. So this is a really, really simple thing. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look and let's just troubleshoot and make sure something like this switch isn't bad. So we'll, uh, we'll plug it back in. And we'll put this on AC volts. And with the switch on, we're just going to check the voltage coming into the power supply itself. And I measured 120 there. So in fact, if I uh, hold my leads there and I flip the switch off, uh, my voltage goes away. 
and then the 120 volts comes back when I switch it back. So um, you can tell right here on the meter that uh, we got 120 volts. So um, this connector and this switch are good. This thing is getting its 120 volts. This is the power supply. So we'll just put this thing back on a DC and look at the power coming out. And as you can see, we're getting zero. So what that little bit of troubleshooting does is tells us that it is this module that's bad. So unplug it and uh, let's take a look at this thing. So this particular module here um, has got some circuitry on the inside, but to be honest with you, I bet I can buy this module here pretty cheap, so there's no real logic in trying to go ahead and fix this thing. Okay, here we are on Amazon.com. This is where I bought my replacement part. Uh, I think I put in 12 volt, 10 amp power supply. And um, here's one there are a lot of them on here um, if this isn't the one I bought it's very similar uh, mainly you just want to make sure you get the right voltage and the right current which was 12 volt 10 amps for mine um, you can look at the pictures and stuff and also I'll just point out that um, right here it gives you the size and this one is the correct size this six and a quarter inch length uh, is the size of my old one uh, and even though it said that the one came in uh, was longer it was eight inches and something long but uh, kind of be aware of that sometimes when you order standardized parts like this from somewhere like Amazon from these suppliers that buy in bulk from uh, Chinese manufacturers sometimes the dimensions aren't exact so uh, here it is um, I think I ended up paying 16 17 dollars like this okay so uh, this is uh, the replacement part I ordered uh, as you can see, judging by the box, I have a feeling it's a little too big. Uh, it was the closest specifications I could find. So here's the replacement part. You can tell that it is uh, very similar um, to the original. Uh, has some of the same, has the same connections here. It's got a few extra voltage ports, but it is longer, uh, and that might pose a little bit of a mounting problem, but we'll figure out a way to overcome that. So one good way you make sure you wire the replacement part the same as the original part is to do one wire at a time and that way you don't mess it up. So I'll disconnect the line first. Okay, you can see the old one is completely removed. You can see there uh, how it was labeled. And um, I've got the new one, which, uh, like I said, is the same specs and everything. It's physically larger. You can see how it was labeled. Uh, it was, uh, wasn't exactly the same. It was really, really close, though. It just has two terminals for positive and negative voltage output. So um, the first thing we're going to do next is uh, power this thing up and... Um, see if that actually fixes it all right got a green light came on there we have our red lights on here
and we have 12 volt DC over there. So that definitely was the problem is this power supply was bad. So this old one. Um, so that's it, but we have to, uh, we have one more little problem to solve and that is this, this new power supply was bigger than the original one. Um, which is unfortunate, um, because, and they put a couple of bosses in here, uh, mounting screws thinking that, you know, maybe there's, there's different options, but this actually doesn't look like it lines up with, with, uh, all with two of them. So, um, as you can see, these are the mounting screws that were there. Um, I left this screw in because it was in a slot on the old one. I have to take it all the way out. So if I lined that screw up right there, um, unfortunately this one doesn't line up and it really can't even reach over there to it if I rotate it. Um, and none of the other ones appear to uh, line up to holes that are on the bottom here unfortunately which um which leaves us with a couple of options um number one you could just mount it with the one screw and um let it float around in there and this thing's not going to go through shipping or anything like that and it would probably be completely fine uh, but let's see if we can do something a little more creative than that okay so here's what i've decided to do i found these um screws these are number six and i've got some nuts to fit um, it's plenty long enough, and I think what I'm going to do is just drill a hole through the bottom of this uh, cabinet, put this through there, put a couple of nuts on it, and then put a nut over top of it. Um, the original screws were smaller than this, so I'm going to have to drill this hole out just slightly, and then I'll use one of the original screws in the other corner. So this, uh, this screw that I drilled out here, I'm going to make a new hole for. And I'm going to use this existing um, existing hole right here, and use one of the original screws. It's actually works, works kind of nice because um, there's some other bosses underneath there holding it at the right height. So really I just kind of have something that kind of holds it down. Okay, I'm just going to use a longer drill bit um, that is a little smaller diameter really just to mark the hole. Okay, you can see right there where I just um, used the drill bit through the hole there to mark where I needed to drill the permanent hole and uh, we'll drill the larger hole right there. Again, this is the, the new screw that we're going to use, and I'll just insert it from the bottom and come up like that, go through that hole, and then we'll go into our slot over there, uh, and that's how this thing will go together. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's uh, through that screw right there, and it's also through one of the original screws over there. So here's the finished product. Uh, again, here's the uh, one of the original screws in one of the uh, alternate bosses that was in there, mounting, mounting screws was in there. And then over here, that is the screw that I added with a nut. Um, you can see on the back side, uh, there's the head of that screw there. So um, it's in there uh, nice and solid. So... Um, Again, you probably could have just put one screw in this and then just uh, mounted it carefully and not shook it up, but I didn't want to leave it like that. Last but not least, we'll put this uh, cover back on.
Okay guys, here we have it. Our uh, power supply is put back together. It is fully functional now. And instead of costing me $150, it costed me uh, about $16 for that replacement power supply. Um, the replacement power supply that I got was a little bit bigger than the original, so it took a little bit of uh, uh, ingenuity to figure out a better way to mount it in there, but we got it done. I had some screws and nuts here that worked. Uh, so that concludes this project. This thing's ready to be put back in uh, in service. Uh, just in closing, uh, look, not everybody's going to have a power supply for uh, video cameras to have to work on. But the key thing is, if you have a device that's broken like this, um, see how much a replacement cost. And depending on the replacement cost, why would you not dive into it? At least take it apart and take a look. You might get into it, you might find that you might be able to buy a circuit board. I've done that before. Buy a replacement circuit board for a fraction of the cost of a whole new thing. Um, so anyway, general, general procedure, always take it apart and take a look. We could have taken it apart and the internal part would have cost $120. And a brand new whole thing would have been, a whole power supply and cabinet and everything would have been $150. And that, if that was the case, I just would have bought the $150 one. So you really got to price the parts and figure out what's the best thing to do. So, okay guys, thanks for watching my video again. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I do uh, little repair videos like this. Uh, I don't know, kind of at random whenever I need to fix something. Uh, and I post them here on YouTube. So uh, subscribe to it and you'll get notified. And uh, thanks for watching.